Good morning, BBC Houston. It's a good day to be alive and here in God's house. We welcome you this morning. Would you rise to your feet as we open up in a word of prayer? God, you are so good, and we just want to say that we love you this morning, God, as we gather as a church to just give you praise. Father, we ask, God, that you would be in the midst of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you remain standing? Take your place. 
child in a manger, the hope of the world, the gift for all. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, Messiah.
God this morning that we can come before you and worship we thank you Lord that we are blessed to stand here this morning God to be those Lord who have witnessed God Lord your life changing love on us and Lord it is our hope and prayer Lord so that as we move about in our life God that others will come to know you Holy Spirit we invite you here this morning may you be exalted in all that we do we thank you in Jesus name Amen. Good morning. You may have a seat. Good morning, VBC. It's so good to be here. I want to welcome those of you who are guests or who've logged on for the very first time today. It is indeed a privilege to have you join us this morning. Now, um, if you are here for the very first time, we're about to enter into our time in which we give to the Lord, whether it's tithes or offering. If you're a guest or you just don't quite understand the giving part, this part you can abstain from. But this time which we give to God, we sow into what God is doing. For those of you, you're looking at um, not only your regular tithing, but you're looking to give it a year-end gift. This is a great time for that. As there have been some great projects we took up this year, and the Lord has been so good to us, whether it is to give to, uh, to finish off the building campaign or to give uh, a year-end so that we can send money to uh, the areas that we're reaching. Our pastor is in Southeast Asia right now, along with our other brothers and sisters as well to minister. We hope to expand on that uh, in 2019 as well, so it's good to give. Uh, if you will, if you have your uh, tithes or your offering, you can just uh, hold that in your hand. Uh, if you want to give online or you want to do that, those you are in here, you can go online as well. as vbchouston.com. vbchouston.com. Click on the Give button, and uh, that would be a very good and easy way to give as well. Well, before we give... If you just hold on to your offering, I'm going to go ahead and pray for that and ask the Lord to bless it. God, Lord, we are so grateful for the opportunity to give, to continue in our worship, God, Lord, to tell you, God, Lord, that you are indeed God above all. Lord, we thank you for your goodness to us. We ask that you bless those who give. Lord, let them see, God, Lord, the light of your glory. Let them see your blessing that comes from you, God, and let your peace rest on them. Lord, uh, we also pray for the finances we're about to receive. We ask that you will bless it and cause it to multiply. And in all things we pray, God, that you will give us the wisdom. So, Lord, that we know 
what to do with the finances, God, so that we can move your kingdom and BBC Houston forward. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, it is so good to be with you this morning. Join us next week uh, for our Christmas service. We'll have it 9 o'clock as well as 11 o'clock. We're going to have some great things take place uh, during the transition time as well. If you have friends, this is a great time to invite them to hear the Christmas message. And of course, next week, our senior pastor, Pastor Con Wynn, will be back here to share. If you also will join us in prayer for our pastor in Vietnam and uh, as a mission team, they wrap up this week as well. And they'll get a chance, we'll get a chance to see them come back and hear great testimonies. And of course, if you will, also join us. Those of you who, um, if, if you can pull up your schedule on Tuesday and join us for our weekly Tuesday prayer. We do not broadcast that. That is something that on the English side, we actually will worship together here at 8 o'clock. And then the English side, we will head on to uh, the connection room to pray together. And of course, uh, finally, the last announcement is um, we have our dream team, the year-end retreat. We would love to have you. It's on the 27th to the 29th of this month. And uh, that will be on from a Thursday to a Saturday. It will take place at a new site, Trinity Pines. Uh, if you're on the dream team, it's 1.30. If you're a guest, it's 1.50. This is, we want to bless those who are on the dream team. It's really been serving hard, you and your family. Uh, so that discounted rate is for you with the t-shirt as well. So we look forward to it. If you have any questions, you can ask those questions in the fellowship hall. Uh, you can uh, ask the people on the desk and as well as you can register uh, today as well during the fellowship meal. So we'll love to have you join us. Well, in continuing our message, I hope that you've been blessed by the, the last three messages. But today, if you will, let's welcome up Pastor Sam Wynn as he continues in the message. Sorry, there you go. It's so good to be here this morning, and I'm so excited to share the word with you guys. I want to give you a, just a warning ahead of time. I probably am going to bawl my eyes out this whole entire message, just like normal, just like always, but I am just so in love with Jesus. I'm just so in love with him. And the past two weeks that, that I've just learned just something new and just revelation and my new understanding of what God's done in my life, I can't help but just say how much I love him. And not that I didn't love him before, but it's just a new level of love that I don't even know how to explain. It, it's, it's a love, if I could put it in the way that I'll, I'll, be in, I'll be in the car just praising and worshiping, and I'll just you know, shouting out from the top of my lungs that, you know, I'm free and that I love him. And the next moment that I change to the next song, I'm crying my eyes out. And, and, and I'm just feeling all the emotions of what true love is like. And it's hit me so hard the past two weeks because of the freedom that I've received. So there's something about getting the understanding of what true freedom is. There's something about understanding what it means to not be held down by any schemes of the enemy. There's something about understanding that the God that we serve, the God that we chose to serve, the God that we chose to be in communion with, the God that we chose to be in a relationship has done something so great, so big, Yet when we are in a relationship with God, when we first started, I don't know if most of us truly understood exactly what he did for us. See, some of us understand that we, when we became a Christian, it was a choice for us to choose that we chose God and we chose to choose him in all the things that we do. And, and, then, I, and then I believe that as we had a relation, have a relationship with God and we go through just the beginning steps of being in a relationship with him. We learn about ourselves because God is downloading things into our heart. He's revealing things to us. And then at the same time, we, we, sometimes we forget about the things that he did from the very beginning. Why? Why? Ask the question to yourself. Why do you choose to serve God? Why do you choose to love him? And then, of course, a lot of people will say, well, yes, because he died on the cross for my sins. That's the, that's the first answer that people usually say, oh, because he's changed my life. And, and for myself, as I got 
into my relationship with God more and more, more and more, I got to a place where, yes, I understood with the bottom, from the bottom of my heart what God did on the cross, but the actions and the meaning behind it, I found out even more as I began to fall in love with Jesus. I found out even more that the reason behind it, and, and, and I, feel, I feel or I felt during these two weeks that God was just downloading in my heart what it felt like. Why, why he did it for us, and, and what was the choice, and why, what was the thought process of him doing it for us? I fell in love so much more. I, I preached a message two weeks ago, and that message has changed my life forever. And, and when I mean changed my life forever, I, I've spoken a lot of messages, I've heard a lot of messages, but here's the thing. This message, for some reason, just flipped the way that I, I see God. It flipped the way that I see what Jesus did on the cross for us. It's totally different. If you guys weren't here, what I was talking about two weeks ago was that I have freedom now, or we have freedom now, because we have an understanding that we don't have two natures. We have one nature, and that's in Christ. People believe that we have two natures, that we have a human nature, and that we have a godly nature. But here's the thing. If you accept Christ, or if you have accepted Christ in your life, you no longer have that human nature. Why? Because the human nature craves to want to do the world things, craves and craves all those things. But if you understand what truly happened on the cross, then you understand also that you died on the cross with Jesus that day too. When you made the decision to accept that he died on the cross for your sins, you accept the fact that you also are on that cross and you start a new life. You are reborn. You are a new person. You are no longer the old man that you were, but now you have a new, fresh life. That changed my life forever. And some of you may say, oh, but Pastor Sam, that's a, that's a typical thing. I thought you would have understood that. You're a pastor. Yeah, sure, I did understand that. I knew those kind of things. But on a deeper level, what I understood was this, is that I no longer have to live a life bound by sin. But Jesus died on the cross for all of our sins. Shouldn't you have known that? Exactly. But why was it that I was in a life where temptation was always coming at me, and, and, I, taught last, and I taught two weeks ago that temptation is only a thought until you put action behind it. So why was, it that I was, why was it that I was living a life where I had struggles? But, Pastor Sam, all, all humans have struggles. All, all human beings deal with things. All of this and all that. And, and, and then when we start to say those kind of things, you start to degrade what Jesus did on the cross for us. Because if you're victorious, then why do you, have, why do you say that on a weekly basis or on a daily basis? Oh, I, I go through a lot of downfalls. I go through a lot of struggles. I go through a lot of problems. But, but I'll tell you this, the great news that I have to share, for the last two weeks, I've lived a victorious life. For the last two weeks, I felt that I was on top of the world with Jesus. And for the last two weeks, I felt that there was nothing that has been able to stop me from loving Jesus to my full potential. And that's what hit me the hardest. It's for the last two weeks, when temptation came my way, or the thought of temptation came my way, the first time I said, no. The second time I said, don't even think about it. The third time I said, I'm not even going to have a, a, a second to think about it. No, Jesus helped me. And that was my first thought. When temptation came my way, I said, Jesus helped me right away. So, to God, that was my first thing that I did. And ever since then, it's been like, when temptation comes my way, it's like just like annoying, tea, uh, uh, annoying tick or flea. You're just like, ah, get off. It's not a big deal anymore. But before, when temptation came my way, it was like a giant that was coming towards me. And, and instead of submitting to God first, I pondered upon the things of what the enemy was trying to do in my life, and I gave, I gave the enemy a foothold. I gave the enemy the right to take control of that situation instead of submitting to God and letting him take control. When, when I got that full understanding of what was happening, it changed my life forget, forever. Yeah, it's just a simple understanding, but that's the thing. It's so simple, yet a lot of people in the world don't understand it yet. It's so simple, yet a lot of people don't understand the true meaning of it. One thing that blew my mind and changed my mind was when I preached that message two weeks ago. I had a person come up to me, and they shared, I want to be free too. And I said, that's amazing. This is what God wants to do in your life right now. She said, and the, and the, the person said, well, I've got a hard time with this and that. And I said, okay, let me ask you a question. Do you smoke? And she goes, no. Well, why not? Because I choose not to. And I said, it's as simple as that. She said, Whoa, wait, what do you mean? I said, why is it that us as humans, when it comes to sin and temptation, we can't say no to it sometimes? 
But we can, for, for the things that we choose to say no to, it's easy. No, I don't do that. And you give it no thought. You give it no, 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 no action towards that at all. No, I'm not choosing to do that. Why do we have that willpower for those things? But when it comes to the things that our body craves, we want it so bad. When our body craves something of, of the world that, that's going to hinder us from our relationship with God, it's, it's like an immediate yes. It's like the, the saying, a, a moment on the lips, a lifetime on the hips, right? When you see that cupcake or when you see that dessert that you want, you, you know in the back of your head, oh, it's going to be something that I'm going to regret later. But you indulge in it. Right, see, and, and, and I know that the enemy has that same mindset and says, oh, I'm going to tempt them with this. Let's see if they go for it. Because I know if I can hook them one time, they know what it's going to taste like, and they're going to want it, and they're going to want it, and they're going to want it. And here's the thing. What God helped me understand was this, is that that slight moment of that indulging of whatever it is, God says, I have more things that I can give to you than just the temporary things that you're trying to get a fix for. Just a temporary thing that's going to just going to make you feel good at that moment or, or let your let your human nature feel as if, oh, I'm complete, but just for that moment. See, something that I've learned about temptation and sin that's just opened up to my mind is it's for a moment, it's for a moment, it's for a moment, and then you catch yourself in a cycle of, oh, it's just for this, it's just for this, it's just for this. But the thing that I've received from God, the freedom that I receive has been forever. It's been forever. I, I, wake, up, I wake up in the morning not thinking about, God, thank you, Lord, for forgiving me for my sins, and then right after that, Man, what happens if I sin again? Am I going to have to ask for forgiveness again? If you have that mindset and if you have that mentality, you're not free from sin. Why? Why do I say that? If you have that mentality and you have that thought, what happens when I sin next? Sin is still your master. But the, the freedom that I've lived for the last few weeks or the last few weeks that has just brought just joy and happiness in my life is this, is that I no longer am afraid but I know that I'm more than a conqueror. I know that Jesus died on the cross to eliminate all of it out of my life so that I can live a life of freedom, a life of victory. But why am I sharing this all again? Is because the freedom that I have had for the last two weeks, I'm not saying that maybe you guys don't understand. No, I'm saying that y'all do understand, but for the ones that haven't caught, caught it yet or got a, a, a grasp of it yet, is this, is that the freedom that Jesus gave to us on that cross is for every single person. And that freedom, if this message can help, is this, is that it's our job to teach others or our job to help others understand that there's that freedom. And I know this 100%. You can't tell me that everyone understands that message. You can't tell me that everyone lives that lifestyle. You can't tell me that everyone understands the true freedom that they live in because if they did, the world wouldn't be how the world is today. My friends or my loved ones or the coworkers that I live with, they wouldn't live the life that they live. Am I saying I'm better than them? No, but I'm saying that the God that I serve has helped all of us to understand that we can live a life of victory and we can help others too. What, why is it so compelling on my heart to share this message? Because freedom is the gift that God has given us. I think about Christmas every single year, of course, because it comes in December, right? But the thing that I'm thinking about now is the freedom that I receive. The freedom that I have received is the same freedom that God's trying to give to everyone. Why do you think he came to this earth as a baby? Why do you think he came as the best gift of all? Freedom. Why do you think he came down? Because God knew that without Jesus, without that, we would live a life of sin. We would live a life of just being downhill at all times. We would live a life of defeat. And God said, that's not what I want for my children. That's not what I want for my children. I want my children to live a victorious life. I want my children to understand that they don't have to be afraid of something I already took care of. I, I'm, I'm reminded by a, a, a parents and children. And, and as children, and, and of course all of us grew up as children, there's something that we were always afraid of. There was something about going to your room and the lights were off and you were scared that something was in the closet. Or you were scared that something was under the bed. But it took your parents to come in and say, there's nothing there. Trust me, don't worry, I took care of it. There's nothing there. And the fear of being in the dark, or the fear of what was in the closet, or the fear of what was under the bed, or even for me, the fear of ha having to take out the trash in the nighttime, or the fear of having to, you know, go, go, go down the hallway or whatever it was when the lights were off, that, that fear, it's gone. It was gone as a child. Why? Because I remember my dad was like, there's nothing to be afraid of. Come on, let's go. Let's do it together. Let's go back inside. 
There was, there, that fear was gone. Why? Because our father or my father helped me during the situation of my fear. As humans and as Christians, our fear is what? Is, is making mistakes or disappointing God. Disappointing Jesus. Disappointing our Father. That's our fear. My fear was always hearing growing up that my parents would say, Samuel, I, I love you, but I'm just disappointed in what you did. That, was, that would have broke my heart growing up. I wasn't afraid of, of getting in trouble or getting disciplined because I, I knew that the life that I lived wasn't something that I was going to get uh, in trouble for like that. But what I feared the most in life was this, hearing my dad or hearing my mom say, I love you, but you disappointed me. That, that disappointment is what would break my heart. Is Why? Because as a child, you want to please your parents. As a child, you want to do the best for your parents. As a child, you want to do the best. And I know as Christians, we want to do the best for God, but yet we make mistakes, right? But yet we make mistakes. And that's why God had to come down as Jesus, because he knew without me, I know that you're going to make mistakes. But with me, with me, you can live a victorious life. That understanding just changed the way that I saw my relationship with God. And why is it? It's because God knew. He knew that we couldn't do it alone. And that's why he lives inside of us. That's why he lives inside of us. He knows without him we could not do it. That message has changed the way that I think. And, and it's so clear. And, and I, I've been texting Paul, and it's so clear in the Bible and, and at the same time, it's so clear that in the world, people see how God wanted us to live a free life in a totally different way. The opposite way, actually. See, some people, they, what I would say, abuse God's grace. See, some people justify the fact that they are living in a life that is full of sin, but there's grace. Here's the thing. God died on the, Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and when you, when you abuse the grace, this is what you're saying. But it wasn't enough. Because what he did on the cross wasn't enough. I know 100% that that's not true. I know 100% that it's not true that he died on the cross and it wasn't enough. What I know is that when Jesus died on the cross, it was enough. There's nothing more that I need. There's nothing more that, uh, there's no, no other fixes that I need. It's just the fact that he died on the cross and acknowledging that he died on the cross, and that was it. That's all that we need. But why is it so hard? It's because the truth that we know and the truth that we need to receive, the enemy knows if we receive it and if we understand it, he has no way of messing with us. Why do you think that the enemy wants to mess with us? Why do you think the enemy wants us to live a life of, of, of temptation and sin? Why? Why do you think that? I'll be honest. I, what I figured out is because he's jealous. He can't be like us. He lost that privilege. He can't be and he can't have the relationship we have with God. He can't have it. And that's the beautiful thing about our lives when we understand that we are privileged. We have the love from God that he can't receive. No wonder why he's that jealous one. No wonder why he doesn't want us to receive what God has already given us. No wonder why he doesn't want us to have the understanding of freedom. Because he's not free. He wants it, but he can't have it. What we have, some of us don't even understand it yet. The freedom that we have was freely given and freely to receive. There's no price that we need to pay because the price was already paid for us. See, when we understand that God is freely giving to us, see, there's a joke, there's a joke with my wife and I. When anything is free, I'll take it. Costco, favorite place, free samples, why not? Stop at every single one. Why? It's free. It's free. I remember, I remember seeing a post on Facebook from one of our church members, and she said, sometimes free isn't always the best, right? But Here's the thing about this free gift that we're receiving from God. There's no tricks behind it. There's no gimmicks of, I give it to you, you have to do something for me. No, nothing like that. The free gift that God gave to us is something that he gave to us to where the, we don't have to try and pay him back. We don't have to pay God back for what he did for us. He's like, no, 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 no. I love you so much. This is yours. This is yours. This is for you. 
And the revelation that God's given me as I say that is this. The reason why we fall short is because we try with our own human abilities to try to repay God. And when we fall, we feel that we disappointed him. Wow. I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even think of that until God just put it in my heart. Is that the reason why we fall short is because we try with our human abilities to work up, to give God back something. When God says, don't even work for it. I already gave it to you. Why are you trying so hard to receive a gift I'm freely giving to you? When the answer for you or when the thing for you to do is just take it, receive it, live with it. Let me ask you this. If, 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 if I was to say, you know what? Here's $100. Or if I was to say, you know what? I see the kind of car you're driving. Let me buy you a new car. And every, every time you drove that car in your head, you're just like, man, why did he do this? Like, I got to repay him back somehow. He, he wants something, you know? And then every single time you see me, you're like, hey. And then it's like fake. Like, hey, uh, thanks for the car. Uh, thank you so much. And when you get around that person, you don't know how to act because you don't know how to receive a gift. I think that the world that we live in, and I think how we were grew up is this. If somebody did something nice for us, that means either they won something or we have to do something back is what they're trying to, trying to get at. And, and when we come to our relationship with God like that, we're like, okay, God gave me this, so that means that I have to live my life this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. When God's gift to us was freedom and how he wants us to live now is free with him and how he wants us to live now is not bound by the things of this world and how he wants us to live now is not chained down and boggled down or, or hurt or any of these. He wants us to live a life of freedom and joy and happiness. He doesn't want us to live a life where we're always looking behind our back thinking, okay, when's the next time I'm going to make a mistake because i got to be ready for this. Or, or if I do this, this will happen. If I do, That's not freedom. That's not freedom at all. I think about even children in, in the nursery or, or growing up as a kid when it was free time or when we had free time to do what we wanted. Every year. Ran where everyone, and I remember Pastor Michael's message brings his kids to the church, they know where they're at, and they know how they can act, and they know their space, and they know all those things, and they have freedom to play. Why? Because they know their identity, and they know who they are and where they are. As Christians and, and, and as children of God, we should know who our Father is, what He owns, and what we can do. Newsflash, God owns the world. Not the devil. God owns it all. News, we are His children if my parents owned a restaurant, do you think every time I went to the restaurant, I'd pay for food? No. It's free. It's mine. Why would I pay for it? If your heavenly father owns this world, why do you pay for pay to live in this world? It doesn't make sense. Why would you do that? This is, this is what I think. During the past two weeks that I've understood this Revelation that God's given me, as simple as it can be, as easy as it is, no wonder why the enemy wants to just try to trick our minds. Because it's so simple. Because it's so easy. But the devil wants us to make it seem like a 12-step program to receive freedom. But God's freedom that he gave us is one step, and it's thank you. Why does the enemy want to change that? Because he knows that when we receive the gift of freedom, when we receive the revelation of what it means to live a free life, he has no ability to mess up your relationship with God. Man, has my last two weeks been amazing. Amazing. What I'm, the, even as simple as it can be, a thought of temptation, nope. Thinking about my past, nope. I, I, I laid in bed the other night, and I, and I opened up to Jeannie, my wife, and I said, man, honey, I, I don't even know how to explain it to you, but my relationship with God is just even more than I had before. And she said, you know what? I, I wasn't here the whole time for your last message, and I had to watch it, but what I understood was the love that you had that you shared on stage, it just showed that you love God even more. And, and she can see that in my life now, and here's the thing. When you have freedom, other people can receive freedom just to see that you're living a life that they want too. A lot of us, when we, whenever we, we see people and they have something, we want that too. 
right? When they, when they have something that you want, you want that too. But here's the thing. People in the world, they want freedom too. People in the world, they don't want, who in their right mind wants to be tormented? Who in their right mind wants to live a life bound by sin? Who in their right mind wants to live defeated? Let's think about sports. You tell me what team's like, let's go out and lose today. Let's try our best to lose. No one. They put forth the effort to try to win, right? They put forth the effort to do all this. But here's the thing. I said it two weeks ago. We're already on the winning team. We're already victorious. We already have chosen to be on the right side. Yet the enemy wants to play tricks, and he wants to come and intimidate us. When his intimidation is nothing at all but him just trying to be like us. But he can't. But he can't. Let me, let me open up to one of the scriptures that has just opened up my mind this week too. In, in 2 Corinthians 3.17, it says, For the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. For the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the, spir the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. If God is in your heart, you have freedom. If God is in your life, you have freedom. My, my, my points for today, and as simple as it can be, understanding your freedom, understanding that you're free, three simple points. Know that you're free, declare that you're free, live like you're free. As simple as that. Know that you're free, declare that you're free, live as you're free. Those three points is what God put on my heart to share with you guys is this, is that if you understand with your mind, and if you can declare it with your mouth, you can live a life of freedom. But if those things are not in order, if those things are not in line, you can't. Because if you don't, if you don't know it, why would you declare it? If you can't declare it, that means you don't know it. And if you can't live it, that means you don't know it in your mind and you don't say it out of your mouth. If you live a life of defeat, you think thoughts of defeat, you say things of defeat. But if you live a life of, of victory, you know you're victorious, you speak that you're victorious, you live like you're victorious. How do we change those things? Starts from the beginning. Know that you're free. How do you, how do you know? How do you know that you're free? Is this, if, like 2 Corinthians says, if the Lord, for the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Just know that in your mind already. Let's change the way that we think. Change the way we think. Am I free? Yes. Am I, am, am I, am, am I able to live a life of freedom? Yes. Am I able to live a life as a Christian and not have to sin and not have to fall into temptation? Yes. How do you know that's true? I believe that Jesus died on the cross for all sins, and I died on that cross with him whenever I accept the fact that he made me new. I have a new life. I no longer have to live two natures. I have one nature, and that's through Christ Jesus. That's it. Check. Facts. Know that in your mind. The second thing to know is, can I say no to temptation? Yes, because temptation without action is not sin. It's just a thought, and you don't have to think about it. Check that off. So how do you declare? How do you declare that you're free? What you tell yourself is this, is that I don't have to live a life of sin. I'm declaring that. I don't have to fall into temptation. I don't have to listen to the enemy. I don't have to do what I don't want to do. I don't have to do what the enemy wants me to do. What I want to do is what God wants me to do. I'm declaring that. As simple as that. When you say those words out of your mouth, you can think about it in your mind and know that that is what I want my life to do. But let's say this. I believe in freedom in my mind, but I speak out of my heart or I speak out of my mouth. But what happens the next time I sin? But what happens if I, if I, don't, if I don't make God proud? But what happens if I, but what happens if this? But what happens if that? If you're speaking that, you start to think that. If you, start to, if you start to speak that and you start to think that, that's how you're going to live. But reverse it. You know, you speak, and you live. On the, on the, I'm just going to skim through it really quick for declaring. Let's look at Isaiah 40, 29, 31. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. 
Even youths will become weak and tired, and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on the wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. I said two weeks ago also that God's promises and God's word that he put in the Bible are facts. Why would he put things that aren't true in the Bible? Why a book that's all about him? Why would he put something that's not true? That's what the enemy wants us to think. When we read God's word, we're like, yeah, but I don't feel like I have strength from God. Yeah, but, you know, when I get tired or burnt out or whatever it is, I don't feel like I'm renewed. And that's what the enemy is trying to play games with you and play tricks on your mind is this, is that he doesn't want you to declare or read out God's word that tells you the truth. When we read that, when we read that verse one more time, and Isaiah 40, 29, 31, he gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. That's a fact. But yet, the enemy wants us to think that that's false. So what do you have to do? When you read God's word, you have to declare it, that God gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. God can do that in my life. When you can read God's word and start declaring it over your life, it changes everything. Why? Because the things that you say, you tell your mind, this is what I want for my life. I want to live a life that's a life of of victory, not a life of failure, not a life of defeat. And when you can tell yourself that, you can believe that. And when you believe it and you can speak it out of your life, that's how you're going to live it. I want to share a testimony about just how how it's been for the last few days of my life, or the last few weeks in my life, is that I've been filled with so much joy to share this message to whoever comes in contact with me or whoever just asks me what I do for a living. I don't go from, I'm a pastor, and just leave it like that. When they ask me what I do for a living, I'm like, I'm a pastor. Oh, and I just spoke like two weeks ago. And they're like, oh, okay. And I'm like, yeah, and then I just start sharing the message. I don't even give them a way out. Before, I would kind of be like, eh, I'm a pastor. But now when people ask me, I'm like, oh, I'm a pastor, and this is what I spoke two weeks ago, and then I just start sharing it to them. And I have this joy, and I have this, like, feeling that this is what people need to hear. Why, why is it when people ask you, why is it when people ask you the question, hey, what's your name, and what do you like to do, that you're just, you, you, you can share easily. But when it comes to things of God, and people ask us, we're kind of, we kind of shy away. Why? is because I don't believe that when we, when we do that, I believe that we don't have the true understanding of what freedom is like. Because for me, I have freedom in my life now, and I have a true understanding of what that freedom is, is that even at, whenever I was at work, and two guys came in, and they were just talking, and I was talking to them, and then all, all of a sudden, I said, hey, you know what? What do you do for a living, man? And he goes, oh, I'm a barber. And I said, oh, okay. And then I said to the other guy, so how do y'all know each other? And he goes, oh, he cut my hair. And I was like, oh, okay. And I was like, man, you know what? Maybe one day you can cut my hair. And he goes, dude, that'd be awesome. I'll do, uh, yeah, for sure. And he goes, here, give me your number. I'm going to text you so that you can sign up for me to cut your hair. I get pretty busy. I was like, okay. So he sends me a text, and the the text says, Kingdom Cuts, and then how to register. I was like, hmm, Kingdom Cuts. And I just said, hey, are you a Christian? He goes, yeah. And right in the middle of where I work, I didn't care who was around. I don't know. Before, I'd be like whispering, but I was like, oh, that's awesome. You're a Christian? And he goes, yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. I was like, man, that's awesome. And he goes, what do you do for a living? Is this, is, is this the only job you have? I said, no, actually, I'm a pastor. He goes, what? You're a pastor? And I was like, yeah. And actually, I just spoke last week. And, and when I said last week, it was on a Monday, so I spoke on Sunday. I said, yeah. And, and I spoke this message, and, and, and I just started sharing what I spoke. And no joke, for 15 minutes, I literally just sat there and just spoke and shared to him the freedom that I've received and the understanding of freedom and the understanding of he can be free too. And the result of that was this. He looked at me and said, that's so crazy. I said, why? He goes, man, I used to be a pastor. And I was like, oh. He goes, I had, I, I, I had a kid with my wife, and we started to get so busy, we stopped going to church. And then I stepped down from the ministry because I just couldn't handle being a father and being a pastor and being at church because, you know, it's just new for, for parents. And I said, yo, I understand that. And he goes, you know what's crazy though? He goes, you sharing this word with me just confirms that God's been trying to pull me back into the ministry. And I was like, I, I was shocked because I was just sharing the good news that I have received from God, the freedom that I've received. Yet God knew that this man needed that message. 
And here's something that Pastor Khan says all the time, and now I understand and truly believe it is this. God's the messenger. We're just the deliverers. We're just the mail carriers. This whole week, I, I watched as FedEx and UPS and USPS, they went up and down my street just passing out mail or passing out packages and all these things. They aren't the ones that put whatever's in the box. They're just delivering it. God is the one that has given this gift of freedom. We're just delivering it. As Christians, it's our job to just deliver this message to people. As Christians, it's just our job to deliver what the message from the king is. That's our job. So, I, I, so back to my story, I, I, I talked to that man. He goes, man, that's crazy because I was a pastor, and I know that God's calling me back. And he looks, at my, he looks at his friend and goes, isn't that crazy that we were just talking about this outside and God just used Sam to confirm it in our lives? And, and I was shocked because I was like, man, I didn't even know there were Christians in the beginning. And what God shared with me after that, after that sharing of just the testimony of what I've learned and what I've received, God shared it in my heart is this, is that you never know who needs this message, so just share it. Just share it. Any person you come in contact with, and you see that they're going through things, or even if you don't see it, just share it anyways. Why? Because you don't know what they're dealing with, and you don't know how, they've, how long they've lived a life of not being victorious. So take a chance, take a risk, step out, and share that message. Why? Because if you understand, and if you believe what God did on the cross, and if you believe the true meaning of Christmas, then you know that he came as a savior for the world. And if you're living in it, he came for you. If you understand that understanding of Jesus Christ died on the cross for all sins to be done with. Why not share it with people that are struggling? For us, first, to, uh, to be able to share something like that, you first have to understand it in your mind and declare it out of your mouth. Understand it in your mind that Jesus has saved you from all the sins that you have in your life, and he has wiped it, and he has made you, he has made you clean. I know that sitting in this room, some of you guys are saying, okay, but I'm a Christian. I love God, but I deal with things in life. I deal with temptations. I, deal, I have struggles. Okay, that's fine. But here's the thing. That's going to change today if you understand this. And why is that? It's because what you're telling me is that the struggles that you deal with in your life, you don't think that God can help you with that? You're telling me that you'd rather hold on to those struggles and not understand the true meaning of the Father or, or the King that has came to save you. So you're telling me you just don't want to be saved. You're telling me that you are stranded out in the ocean and you're, you're, you're dog paddling and you, you, you want to succeed in life, but you're dog paddling because you're held down by things and you're scared and you don't know what to do. And you're telling me that Jesus Christ is reaching out to reach out for your hand, but you're saying, but I don't know if I want to receive his help. That's what you're saying. See, when you change the way that you see things and you're like, no, but, and, and you stop saying, woe is me, and you stop saying, oh, but, 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 I don't, uh, and you understand that it doesn't matter what you're in, it doesn't matter what you're dealing with, God's here to save you. As clean, as clear, straight as that. When you understand that, you're like, wow, why have I been putting pressure on myself to not be saved? Why have I been putting pressure on myself to not be relieved of this pain, relieved of this stress, relieved of this whatever you're dealing with? That's freedom. Freedom is understanding that God is ready to just take care of whatever situation you're in. Freedom means you never have to deal with it again. Freedom means that you are no longer bound by those things. Freedom means you have a true understanding that you are no longer held down by whatever it is in your past, held down by whatever it is that you're dealing with, but what it is for freedom means that you no longer have to live a life of defeat and you can be victorious. That's what true freedom is. See, this past week with preparing my message, and I shared with you guys last week that my, preparing my message two weeks ago was the biggest struggle that I've had preparing messages ever. And I, and I didn't understand why, and I didn't understand. I was like, God, I, I can easily understand what you're saying, and I can easily read your word, and I know how to dissect your word, and I know how to put a message together. Why am I having such a hard time? And the reason why I was having such a hard time was because I was struggling with understanding and I was struggling with reading, about, reading up on or studying on the fact that people do believe that you have two natures still. I, I, I couldn't understand it and, and, and I couldn't accept it in my heart that we have two natures still. So what you're saying is you're a Christian, but in your life you serve two masters? Well, that's false. And that's a lie from the enemy. 
I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm no longer a slave to sin, or, or I'm no longer a slave to the enemy. No, I have a new master, and my master is righteousness, and I can live under God and understand that I'm free, and that he took care of all those things. He paid my debt. I'm debt free. He paid it. I no longer have to think about what happens now if I do this or if I do that. No, my thoughts now are not even that. My thoughts now are, who am I going to share this message with? I'm not thinking about the next time I'm going to fail. I'm not thinking about the next time I'm going to make a mistake. I'm thinking about the next time that I'm going to help somebody else become free. I'm thinking about the next time I'm going to help somebody get elevated in their relationship with God. My thoughts are no longer about me. My thoughts are now on what God wants us to do with our lives. Why is it that when we have a mindset of thinking just about ourselves that we start to struggle? It's about me, it's about me, it's about me, and you're inputting whatever it is in your life more and more and more. But when you think about the things of the kingdom, and you think about what God wants you to do, and you think about what God has planned for your life, you want to do what God wants to do. And you no longer have the temptations of what it is for yourself, but what you're thinking about is this, is how can I help someone else understand the understanding that I have now of freedom? And it changes. Why? It's because before I'd be like, I don't know what, before I would be like, if somebody was off the street, I'm like, I don't know what they're dealing with, so I don't know what to say. Like if I meet them in a store and God puts it on my heart, pray for this person. I don't know what to pray about. I don't know what to say. And you're like, man, you're a pastor, shouldn't you know? Yeah, I know. I can pray whatever, but I want to know the exact thing to pray for them. I want to know the exact thing to share with them. You know, I, I was speaking with, I was speaking with the youth and I was trying to tell them, all right, guys, you always have to be ready for your testimony. And I remember just going through how to share your testimony, what to write, and all these kind of things. And, and, they, and they all said, man, but I don't know what to share. I don't know what to share. I don't know what to put down. I don't know. And I said, it's about your life. And he said, but my life's not really that interesting. I didn't really have a testimony that, that was like, I grew up in a hard life and, and all these things. And, you know, they're all in like middle school and high school. So I like, I didn't do this. I didn't do that. So I don't know what it's like. And I shared with them exactly what, Pastor Michael shared was that maybe that testimony of growing up in a stable lifestyle or in a stable home is what people want to hear. Maybe that's what people need to hear. But I don't, and, and they're like, I don't know what it's like. Like my testimony, let, for instance, let's say someone's parents are divorced. My testimony is not going to help them because my parents aren't divorced. Yeah, exactly. But you know what it's like and you know what they're missing and you know what to pray for them now. They're missing the love of this. They're missing the love of that. They're missing the growing up with a father or growing up with a mother. They're missing those things, and that's exactly what you can pray for them, and that's exactly what God can do in their life and implement and, and heal them from those things. I ask you this question is because of this. Having freedom and not sharing about it, what are you doing then? Why? why? And, 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 I'm, I, and I say this, and I, I'm not saying it, in a mean way, but why are you hogging freedom when you can share it? Why are you keeping it for yourself when you can share it? Why be ashamed or why be afraid to say that you're a Christian and that you live a free life? Why? There's no need to. There, there's more of, there's more enjoyment with freedom when you're able to help somebody else. I'll guarantee you that. There's more enjoyment in your relationship with God when you bring people to Christ. Is that not true? Yes. I have that joy, I have that, that freedom whenever I'm able to help bring someone to Christ or, or open up their eyes to see that they don't have to live that old lifestyle anymore, that they can live a new lifestyle. It changes everything. So what do I, what do, I do now? And I, 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 and I can see it on some of y'all's faces. Well, what do I do now? I, I'm, I'm, Pastor Sam, I'm actually, I feel like I'm out of luck because I've been living a life as a Christian, yet at the same time, I don't really understand the true freedom. Guys, I was in the same place a couple weeks ago. That doesn't make you any less. That doesn't make you worse. That doesn't make, no, it's nothing. That's what the grace is about. God's already forgiven you. God has, that's why he died on the cross. He's already forgiven you. Now, all it means is that you need to change the way that you think, change the way that you speak, and change the way that you live. As simple as that. Declare and just speak it out of your life that I'm free, that I no longer have to do this. I no longer have to be bound by sin. And for me, this past, the past two weeks, 
it's elevated my relationship with God. Why? Because I only think about what God wants me to do. I only think about how I can expand God's work in my life. Before you ask God, what do you want me to do next, God? What do you want me to do in my life? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? When now that I have the understanding of freedom, God's like, share that with everybody else. Share that with everybody else. And you think about when Jesus was walking on earth and he was going from town to town, speaking the same thing that there's freedom and he brings healing to people and he helps people be restored and he helps people understand that they have a new life and that they no longer have to live that life. And then the last thing that he usually says to people is go and sin no more. Why do you think he said that? Why? Because their lives are transformed. So why go back to your old ways? That hit me in my heart so deep because I never understood when, when people in the Bible, when people were healed and when people were transformed or, or their lives were transformed and, and Jesus said, go and sin no more. And you think to yourself, well, duh, why would they, right? But then saying that out of my mind, I truly didn't understand at the time either. Because that's like, that, that would be like, for instance, for me saying, when you become a Christian, right, and, and, you, and you say the sinner's prayer and everything, but then right after that, it didn't mean anything to you. So what did you honestly just do? What did you honestly just do? But I feel like a lot of people in this room, or I feel like a lot of people in the world under, still have this understanding, but they have an understanding, but it's too hard. It's not easy. I tried. It's like a New Year's resolution. I keep failing. It's, I, I try, I try, I try, I try to do this. I, I, I've tried to read my Bible so many times, and I wanted to finish my Bible so many times, but by the time I get to the beginning of a book and they start reading names, I give up. Or I've tried to pray, and I've tried to talk to God, and I've tried to have my quiet time, and I've tried to have devotion with God, but it seems as if every time I get past three months, I always end up giving up. Or I've tried to do this, and i tried to do that, and I always give up, and I try, and I try, and I try, but I give up, and I, and, I, and I fail, and I have to wait till the next year to do it again. And do you understand, and do you guys hear what I'm saying out of my mouth, that all you're doing is speaking into your life that you're a failure? But instead, what you can say now, ask someone that understands to live a victorious life, I'm going to do this, I'm going to pray, I'm going to read my Bible, I'm going to spend quality time with God, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to this, and I'm going to succeed, and I'm going to do this. When you have that motivation, and you have that drive to succeed, you will succeed. But when you have a thought in your mind and a doubt of what happened in the past, you're living, and you're you're living in fear, and you're still captive by what happened in the past. Here's the thing. I guarantee you this. When sports teams, when they play, and they're the champions, and they win, for instance, either the Super Bowl or, you know, or they win in the NBA or whatever it is that they win, I bet you this, they reminisce or they are reminded by their last championship. They don't think about the many times that they lost past that. They think about their championship and how many times they want to feel the same way as champions over, 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 and over. Think about that in your mind. You are champions. You are victorious. You are a winner. You are no longer a slave to fear. You are no longer bound by the enemy. You are a winner. Think about that over and over and over and over again. And any time, any time that temptation comes your way, say no. Any time that the enemy tells you something that you don't want to do, say no. Say no, and it's easy to say no when you really don't want to do it. But it's easy to say yes when it's still your master. So today, this is what I ask, is that you receive freely the gift that God's given you today. You receive freely the gift of freedom. You receive freely the gift of a new life a new understanding, a new mindset, a new way of thinking of your relationship with God. The things that you have from the past or the understanding of having two natures, throw that away. Don't think about that anymore. Think about the new life that you live and having one mindset and one nature in Christ. Think about that. Choose that life. Choose joy. Choose to, be, to live in a victorious life. Choose to be someone who is not bound by the things of this world, but choose to live and choose to elevate on the shoulders of God, who's already a champion. Choose that. 
I know right now at this moment, and I can see it on a lot of y'all's faces that y'all are thinking to yourself, man, there's a lot of things I'm going, with, going through though. There's, just, there's a lot of things I'm going through though. Here's something that I will share with you. The things that you're going through, I guarantee you the God that I serve and the God that I'm in love with right now, Jesus Christ, he would take care of all those things. Easy. And even as I say that, I also feel that y'all are saying, but I've tried before. I honestly have tried before. I've honestly tried my hardest. I've, I've tried to this, but yet I still revert back to my old ways. And I still revert back to doing this, and I still revert back to doing that. But I challenge you to think a new way. If you don't put yourself first, but you put God first, it changes everything. And for parents, and, 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 and for people that are in relationships or marriages, like, yeah, but it's, it's hard to put God first because I, I put my family first, honestly. And that's a true answer. I put my family first. I think about my kids, I think about my loved ones, and I put them first. I understand that, right? I understand that, but here's the thing. What, what helped me understand something is this, is that I had a fear all the time, and God reminded me today, I have a fear that, of anything ever happening to Jeannie. That's my fear, anything. I have a fear of just, she's actually uh, sick right now, and, I, and I, ha I have just a fear of, man, what happens if I'm not home, and she's sick, and she's, you know, all this, and I need to take care of her, and all these things, and I have that fear, and even, I, I, what happens with her at work, and what if she's driving from the house to work, and something happens to her? I have that fear in my heart all the time. I did, and then God shared with me as simple as this. Do you think that you love her more than I love her? And I was like, oh, I guess not. And, and even for the parents out here, do you think that you love your kids more than Jesus loves your kids? I think not. So let God take control of your family. So let God help you raise your kids. So let God help you choose your career path. So let God help you choose the job that you need in your life. So let God help you. That's how you live a victorious life, is if you let God help you. That's how you live a victorious life. For the ones in this room that are going to have kids, let God help you. Choose the path for your kids. Let God help you. Choose the way. And I know it's hard to let go. It's hard to let God take control. It's hard because we want to be in control of all of these things. We want to be in control of every aspect of our life, of when we're going to graduate, or when we're going to get a job, or when we're going to be this, and when, and when, and when. And it's hard to let God take control. Why? Why is it so hard to, to let go? It's hard to let go because you are reminded that, you're reminded of your past, of the times that you failed. You're reminded of your past, of the times that, if I'm not in control, this is gonna happen. If not, if I'm not in control, something bad could happen. But I guarantee you, if you let God take control and if you truly understand God taking control in your life, for your family's life, and for your career path, and for whatever it is, if you let God take control, He will change your life. He will change the way that you live. He will change the way. If you understand that you are victorious, He will change the way that you see things in life. I'm victorious and I'm choosing to believe that I'm victorious. And I'm choosing to live that life. I'm not choosing, I no longer want to live the old life that I have and I want to be in a life of freedom every day. I want to be in a life of freedom every day. And when I think about the cross and when I think about Christmas and I think about the gift that I'm receiving, it changes the way I see those things. And I think what has happened also is that the world has been corrupt and they don't see Christmas and they don't see Easter the same way. But it's our jobs every day to remind people that they're free. It's our jobs every day to remind people that they live a life of victory. And people that are bound by the things of this world, help set them free. Be a vessel so God can use you. Be a vessel. If we want to see our families changed, if we want to see Houston changed. If we want to see VBC grow, it all starts with us. The road to freedom, guys, was what, that's the message that we've been sharing, the road to freedom. 
after today, you're not on the road to freedom anymore. You're free. You're free. Don't think about the steps that you have to take. You're free. Help people understand they're free. Help people understand they can be delivered from the things that they're dealing with, the addictions that they have. They are free. Help people understand that. But you can't help people if you don't understand it yourself, that you are free. You are free. So with today's altar call, with today's end of the message is this, is that you are free. And that God wants to give you that gift today and that understanding. And if you feel that you're in a place in your relationship with God where you need to understand that freedom, I'm here to impart what the understanding that I have of freedom that God has given me to you. If you're tired of living that lifestyle, if you're tired of living that life that you've been in, and you're tired of being a loser, and you're tired of failing, and you're tired of always being last, God wants to help you understand that you're first. And if you are in this room, you think that nobody cares for you. I'm sorry to tell you this, is that God cared for you even before you were born. He made you victorious even before you were born. He made a way for you to live a life of righteousness and victory before you were even born. But all you have to do is accept that. All you have to do is accept that. This message is for all of us. Don't let this message, don't let you, don't let the enemy play a trick on you and say, oh, it's not for you. You're righteous already. You're like, you have all, no. Let God change the way that you think. Let God change the way that you understand that the enemy really has no power over your life. He's jealous. That's why. Be proud of what you have. Be proud of the gift that you receive. Be proud that Jesus wants you to be victorious. I chose you first. I chose you first. So this is what I want to do. As the team plays, I want to end out in prayer, but I want to end out in prayer for, the, for everyone to have this understanding of freedom. Here's the thing, it's December. You're going into the new year. Don't go into the new year with the same mindset that you've had these past years. Because if you agree that this past year has been a bunch of failures and a bunch of uh, times that you've been bound by sin, move past that. The new year is a new start. But don't let it be that it takes till January. Let it start now. Push for that new season right now. Push for that new understanding right now. Holy Spirit, I thank you so much for the message of freedom. I thank you for this series that helped us understand that we are free and we are no longer bound by the things of this world because you have taken care of it all for us. And God, that we are no longer in debt because you have paid that price for us and that we can live a life of victor victory and we can live a life as champions. So God, I ask right now that you open up the hearts and, uh, of the people in this room and you open up just the mind to receive the knowledge and the wisdom that you have given us today. And God, for anyone that's watching online that needs to receive this too, I ask Holy Spirit that you enter into their house or wherever they're listening to this message and change their mindset, change the way that they see things. Holy Spirit, I ask that you do a great work right now. Do a great work right now. So I want to open up the altar. For those of you who are tired of that lifestyle, who are tired of being last, who are tired of losing, the altar is open for you. Claim your victory today. Claim your freedom today. I'll have leaders come up and I'll have them pray for you, but I don't want them to even talk to you until you get that understanding from God himself right here and understand that you are a winner, you are not a loser. This, the, the song that they're playing, the words that start is that, I'm not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again? And not for a minute, not for a minute were you forsaken. God has not forgotten about you. Just because you are living in a life where you feel that you're not good enough, God's telling you that's not about that. I love you no matter what, and that's why I died on the cross for you. I love you no matter the pain that you're dealing with. I love you no matter the suffering that you're dealing with, and I loved you so much that I gave my life for you. I loved you so much that I gave it all for you. Receive what I gave to you. Receive what I gave to you. Receive what I gave to you. 
if that's you and if you feel that that's you, come to the altar and just worship God right here. Just worship God for who he is and the freedom that he's given you because you don't have to live a life bound by sin. You can have a new mindset and be victorious. You don't have to. At this moment, don't even think about the things that you're dealing with. Know that you're about to be elevated and know that you don't have to deal with it anymore. Sin is no longer your master, but God and righteousness is the way that we can live. And as Christians, I will testify to tell you today, it is possible. It is possible to live a life of freedom. It is possible to live a life and not be tempted. It is possible to live a life and not deal with sin. It is possible. It is possible to say no. It is possible. And if that's for you, come to the front and receive that understanding. Receive that understanding. Holy Spirit, we open up this altar, Lord, for you to do your work, for the minds to be set free and for our lives to be changed. And God, I thank you for this message. Lord, and I ask that as we leave today and as we go and we celebrate the message that you have given us, Lord, I ask that you bring so much joy in our hearts that we can't stop but to share to whatever, whoever we come in contact with that they can live a victorious life. And God, I thank you so much for this message, Lord, and I ask that you bless Lord, just the fellowship that we're going to have in the foyer, Lord. And I thank you for the lives that came into this room today for the first time, Lord. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, I thank you so much for coming out to our message. If you want to stay to receive prayer, please come to the front. Don't hesitate. Don't be ashamed. This vic victorious life is for all of us. It's not for one. It's not for just one person. It's for all of us. And if you have, and if, and if, you don't know about this victorious life that I'm talking to you about. I am glad to be able to share it to you. For everyone else that has, in, that has been here, just go out and enjoy the donuts, the kolaches, the coffee, the breakfast, and share with each other. Just the joy that you have after this message. Share with each other how it's blessed you. Share with how you're going to change. Share with who you're going to change. Thank you so much for coming, guys.